And I mean, one of the main reasons that I reached out to you is, is obviously I wanted to get the full story on paper and I, I want more people to hear your story. And thank you. Yeah, you're doing really, really great things. Um, before we get into what happened on social media, what I do want to ask is, is what, what can hockey culture learn from with, and this is one of our Twitter questions, um, from the inclusivity that the LGBT uh, uh, Q community has. Um, can you touch upon uh, how we can maybe learn some lessons um, from, from what your community is doing? Yeah, I think um, I think what we can do from it is is take that community and people come to me all the time that want to be involved in the sport within it. You know what I mean? And kids, kids come to me all the time and quit because they don't feel like they can um, be part. Hockey has the ability, especially in. in Canada and Canadian culture to have such a massive impact. Mm. And I think my community tries to empower people, empower each other. And hockey could be a place to empower people who are struggling, whether it's mental health, whether it's, you know, with disabilities, whether it's um, being a minority, it, it can be a place that you can go to and feel good. I had a kid reach out to me not that long ago, uh, a trans boy who's, um, he was cutting himself daily. And then he found bodybuilding and he started working out every day. Hmm. And now he doesn't cut himself, but it gave him drive, purpose, goals. Hockey could uplift. That's what my community tries to do. That's why we have those celebrations. That's why we, have villages in major centers where people can move to and feel safe. We want to uplift and hockey can do that. But for hockey to do that, I think one of the first things they have to do is humanize these issues. Mm. The, like, I don't think these players are bad players. Like we talked about they're products of this environment, right. they're not bad guys. And I know we're going to talk about what Pross was saying and, and how he was trying to articulate that. I think, um, but they haven't been exposed to anyone different than themselves. Right. So they can get away with saying whatever, and they don't know any better. Such a small and, world. Yeah. yeah. And the people who came before them did that stuff. Right. And taught it to them. As coaches, as players, as different older players, different things. But hockey now has to do a better job of, humanizing these issues for kids and for current NHL players, race issues, sexuality issues, these types of things, and give them stories, mental health stories, mm. so they can at least critically think about what they're saying and hopefully start making shifts or, or become outspoken in a positive way to create shifts, right. to become passionate. I know so many guys in the NHL that have gay siblings. Hmm and don't say a word right fear of reprisal yeah, yeah man. completely yeah yeah no i think that's a great point and there are you know i'm sure that there are i mean there's campaigns put on by the nhl uh, the hockey is for everyone i know that you do a little bit of work with um with the ohl or has that oh yeah 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 um and you know we can say what we want to say about the hockey is for everyone. And I think it, it, they try to make it apply to a bunch of different platforms, but just participating in a parade or having former players doing that, I don't think is quite enough. And um, it would be nice to see them take a, a bigger step forward in that regard. Well, let me ask you, have you seen a team have a parade before winning a cup? No. Why would you celebrate work of inclusion when you haven't done the work? Hmm. Yeah, touche. And and that's what Hockey's for Everyone does, and that's what going to the Prides does. If you're going to do these macro things, which can be great, right. do the micro work. Right. Do the work at all the levels to create the true shifts for all people. Right. 
And then when you do that, celebrate the hell out of it. And you know what? I will be the first one to stand up and celebrate with them. Right now, I won't. I refuse. Yeah. 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 And it's so hard. And we've talked about this before. It's like, where do you start? You know, and and I really, truly believe that in order to impact the most people and in order to really change this hockey culture, it really does need to start young, um, like what you were doing in Sudbury. And it's not so much like it's too late for the NHL at that point, but when you get to that level and you've been indoctrinated in this system for that long, it's really hard to break the chains. It's really, really hard.